It is the fall time of the year, and that means for a lot of us, it's time to put the summer rods away and start dusting off our jerk bait rods. This is a technique that comes back with a vengeance this time of the year and either lasts until, you know, lakes are covered in ice, or if you live somewhere that doesn't suck, all the way through until spawn. So today, we're gonna do a recap. We're gonna break down our favorite jerk bait rods for all different sizes and styles of jerk baits, from little tiny guys all the way up to the big ones, uh, just as kind of a jerk bait rod refresh. So just a little recap, make sure we're all on the correct page so we can enjoy jerk bait fishing as much as we possibly can. So if you'd like to geek out on some rods, come along, let's go. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. Oh, what a oh, stud. Yeah. Look at that. That was sick. Cheers, my friends. Happy Sunday. All right, guys, some breaking news. What's this week at the Hookup Tackle? What a beautiful post spawn fish. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that gut on that. That's a nice fish. Boom! <laughs> oh, Welcome back, my friends. I am Ben with the Hookup Tackle, the Tackle Otaku on Instagram, being joined by my buddy Jeffrey the King. We're the Hookup Tackle USA. Jeff, good morning. Oh, hi, good morning. Are you ready to talk about jerkbait rods? Uh, I love jerkbait rods. Jerkbait fishing, one of my favorite types of fishing. We talk about jerkbaits and jerkbait rods a lot on this channel because it's, yeah, I think it's something that's very close to all of us. We all love to do it. It's an amazing technique for catching fish, but it's also got a lot of style to it, right? It really is kind of up to the angler to impart the action, make the bait move or not move or do different things. Uh, it really makes it an exciting way to do it. So, you know, basically once that weather starts shifting, we start getting those cool mornings, having to put a sweatshirt on, that's basically the first sign that the jerkbait bite is going to get really strong where you are. And it will carry all the way through, you know, till post spawn in most places. Now, a lot of you may live in places like we do where you can still catch them in the summer, but usually by the time you get to September, those fish are so summered. They're offshore, deep structure, you know, they're just not really set in a way that I like to think of jerk baits, which is when those fish start moving shallow, following bait in, that water cools, their activity level drops, and you need that bait to kind of just have that little darting, enticing action, that little suspend. Uh, it could just be some of the funnest fishing of the year when you tap into it. So, one of the keys to jerkbait fishing, uh, for a lot of different reasons, is having the right rod. So today we're gonna talk about all the different styles of jerk baits and how to match the right rod to it. Basically just to kind of a rod refresher to make sure that we're all using the best rods possible that we can. Now, let's start really quick by talking about basically three things that for me are important with a jerk bait. So the number one thing that I'm looking for in a jerk bait rod is I want the rod to help me not get tired so fast. Okay, now, Jeff, you're a young guy. This may not be as much of a problem for you, but even when I was your age, throwing a jerk bait wasn't easy, right? So if you're throwing a jerk bait all day and you're casting it out there and you're literally ripping that bait all day, this can be just so taxing on your wrist, your forearm, your elbows. It's, it's really the fastest way to tire yourself out by using the wrong gear. If you use a rod that bends too much, every time you go to jerk that bait, that rod's vibrating and all that vibration's coming back into your forearm and you'll know, you know, probably 10 or 11 casts in that your day is about to suck, right? So I look for a rod that can cast the bait and work the bait well, but that doesn't wear me out to throw it. So usually what that looks like is you want the rod to have a certain amount of softness, a certain amount of bend to it, 
to where when you go back on your cast, the rod's gonna load, it's gonna follow through, so you're gonna make good cast. But then as you're twitching, you want that rod to be able to absorb a lot of that twitch, and then it should fasten up somewhere in the middle of the rod, so by the time it gets to where you're holding the rod, there's nothing really bending, shaking, vibrating, right? So this is why we usually don't use a crankbait rod to throw a jerk bait, because crankbait rods tend to be too soft, uh, too limber, and when you jerk, the whole rod kind of vibrates all the way into your hand. So I want that rod to have just a little bit of give at the tip, and then faster in the mid and butt section. Second thing it needs to do is it needs to be able to land the fish, okay? So this is why we don't throw like a jig and worm rod that's just super fast because once the fish is hooked, remember that most of the time we're throwing jerk baits with tiny little treble hooks on them, right? So you get these size six or size four trebles that are hooked on the outside of the face, you want the rod to be as soft as possible once they're hooked. Right, so you kind of almost want it to be a crankbait rod at that point. So we're trying to find this blend, right, of not wearing ourselves out and having land ratio. So these are things that as I'm going through these rods, we've used all these rods enough to know with confidence that, hey, this is a good one. You can throw this all day, it's not gonna wear you out, but once they're hooked, they're gonna be able to bend in a certain way to where you should be able to keep them pinned and have that land ratio really high. The third thing for me that I look for is I look for sensitivity. So where we are, a lot of our jerkbait fishing is done in really clear water. And I know, you know, we, Jeff and I have traveled through a lot of this country throwing jerkbaits. I know where a lot of you guys live, you're in the same situation where you're jerkbait fishing is usually a really long cast. You might be out on a flat that's only six or seven feet deep, and if that fish sees any type of shadow or indication that there's a boat nearby, he's bailing. So you gotta make as long a cast as you can, and so often with a jerk bait, it's some form of cadence, like a twitch, twitch, pause, right? There's usually a suspend in there. It's not usually just twitch, 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 twitch as fast as you can. It's usually some kind of like jerk, 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 and then a pause. It's almost always on that pause that you get bit. So being able to have a rod that has sensitivity to where if you've thrown as far as you can, you're 100 feet out there and it's windy and you've got waves and you're twitching that bait and all of a sudden you can feel that at the end of your line way out there, you've got kind of the perfect world, right? You've got the sensitivity, the cast ability, you can jerk it all day and not wear yourself out and then you can land the fish, okay? So, let's start running through rods, and I'm gonna do as extensive as I can, but of course, if I miss any rods, or you have questions or anything I didn't cover, uh, at the end of the video, you guys can drop it down below in the comments, and I'll do the best I can to answer. All right, so let's, I thought, Jeff, the easiest way to do this would be kind of by bait category, okay? So, <clears throat> I've broken the baits kind of down into a regular line, a light line, a heavy line, and then kind of like a magnum size, okay? So for me, when I think of jerk bait and I think a regular line, I'm thinking like 10 or 12 pound floral, okay? That's probably the industry standard. I'd say probably 90% of the time people throw a jerk bait, they're throwing it on 10 pound or 12 pound floral, okay? So for me, these are baits where I want a rod to have kind of a lighter action. My movement is usually lighter these are more like tap the slack type movements, and we'll talk about that really quick, okay? So, for me, these are gonna be baits like this, the Edo Vision 110, right? Basically everything in this line, 110 Junior, 110 Plus One, this is probably the most popular one in this category. The Raid Level Minnow falls in this category for me, right? So this is another really good one. Uh, some of the smaller, like dual realis baits fall in here, the Pointer 78 and Lucky Craft, or the Slender Pointers fall into this category. And basically what I'm saying, when I'm saying tap the slack is usually baits that perform best with this type of line have a thinner kind of lip or bill to it, okay? So they're designed really to get just enough water resistance to where when you pull on it, the bait can just kind of move and dart, okay? These aren't baits that you're gonna jerk really hard, really heavy, because they're just gonna kind of wash out and roll. They're not designed for that right? They're designed to just lighter taps or you're just kind of tapping the slack with it so that as your rod comes down 
at the very end of your movement, very end of your motion, that should just be now kind of pulling that bait. Okay, you're not pulling the bait the whole time of the movement or the bait's gonna roll like that. Does that make sense? So you want that bait to be sitting still and you move your rod and then right at the end of the movement, the bait should be moving. Same thing, boom, and it's just moving, okay? So kind of a tap the slack. So when that's called for, <clears throat> and I would say probably, I mean, for me, that's probably the majority of my jerk bait fishing uh, lives in there. Level minnow, slender pointer, uh, something in a 110, some, something like that. This is the rod of choice for me and for a lot of it. And this is the Destroyer P5 110 stick. Okay, so there's a bunch of jerkbait rods in the Mega Bass lineup. This one is an F465X. Okay, so it's a six foot five inch, which makes it incredibly light because it's short. Okay, so a lot of jerkbaits rods are traditionally 610, 611, seven feet. This one's you're gonna shave basically six or seven inches off. So it weighs absolutely nothing, which helps even more on the, it doesn't wear me out all day thing, okay? The other thing it does is this is, I would have to put this up in their jig rod categories of rods for sensitivity. It's crazy sensitive. And again, a lot of that is because it's short. So things transfer very fast to my hand. So a bite way out there is transmitted very quickly and I can feel everything happening. It's a soft enough rod to where as I bend this through the middle, it has that nice kind of give and bend too. So if I'm holding it right here and I really start kind of shaking like this, I can feel it kind of wobbling on both sides. So it's got that nice bend and flexibility after they're hooked, but in just regular movements, you can see that it recovers very quick, okay? So I can't say enough good things about this rod. This one is money for me, but there are a couple other rods at a little bit less price points that can also be great additions to this category. So other rods, if I was gonna look elsewhere to do this, the two other rods that I think are absolutely perfect in here uh, would be one of these. So this is the Levante Jerkbait Special, okay? And this would be a 199 rod. And this would be from Raid. This is in their anti-series. This is the Joker, which is a 610 medium. So you got a 611, a 610, and then a 65. So for me, this is my go-to, but the Joker gives me uh, a little extra length, which some guys still like. I haven't seen where the length is necessary, but sometimes it's just a hurdle mentally, right? I've used a seven foot rod my whole life. I just can't throw that six five. I get it, right? Or maybe you have a reel that you just absolutely love and it's heavy. It's weird to put a heavy reel on a really light 6.5 rod that doesn't weigh anything. Sometimes you have to go to a 6.10, 6.11, seven foot rod just to balance it out, right? So there are reasons, but this is an amazing one that it definitely gets slept on. It's got that same kind of soft tip at the top. If you really start laying into it, it's gonna bend deep into that blank. So it gives you that same kind of parabolicness, but it's relatively fast. It recovers very quick, so you can twitch all day and it recovers very quickly so you're not wearing yourself out. In the Levante, the reason I chose the Levante over the Orochi is I feel like the Levante is a better, lighter line, all-purpose jerkbait rod than the Orochi. We're gonna talk about the Orochi in a minute, but it does other things better, in my opinion, than throwing these lighter line, straight 110 baits. So the Levante is gonna have a little bit more give. It's a little bit softer and it's an easier rod to just kind of do that tap the slack motion, where again, you're pulling down and at the end of your motion, that's when you want that bait to be having the movement. Uh, so there you go, that gives you a $199 option uh, and it gives you a couple kind of a mid-range option with the Raid and a high-end option with the P5. Now, what if we go down in size, okay? So downsizing is something that's super important a lot of times. I try not to usually go much smaller than say something like a 110. Like this is usually kind of my starting point of size. But sometimes you just have to downsize. Sometimes they're just feeding on small bait. Sometimes they get super pressured. Sometimes they've seen 9 million 110s 
And it's important to drop down to something like an X Nanahan or an OSP Ashura or even a little Durga, something like this, right? So usually when we downsize, we're now leaving this kind of half ounce size and we're shrinking down into 3 8 quarter, 3 16 We're getting lighter and lighter and lighter. Now, a lot of the newer baits, like the six and a half, only a quarter ounce, but the way transfer system is so good in it that if you have a good reel on your 110 stick that we just showed you, you can throw this on your 110 stick. And I usually do, just throw it on my casting gear. But most people, when you start dropping below that half ounce size, tend to err more to the side of spinning because it's easier to cast. Unfortunately, most of the time when the jerkbait bite is really amazing, it's usually windy, right? And jerkbaits suck to throw in the wind. Uh, so, you know, utilizing some form of spinning combo is usually a really good idea on the lighter bait. So I'm gonna talk about three spinning rods I think are important to note. Again, I'm looking for the same things in a spinning rod that I was looking for in a casting rod. I want that rod to have a soft enough tip to where I can twitch it and it, the whole rod's not just super wobbly. I want it to be able to kind of just do the same thing that we just talked about. I want the rod to have enough give through that midsection to where when it's hooked, the rod can bend with the fish and keep them pinned. And I need that rod to have some sensitivity, okay? So anytime we're talking spinning on jerk baits, this is usually where I start. This is the Destroyer P5 Windbuster. Now I speak about the Windbuster all the time. The majority of the time I use the Windbuster, I use it as a bottom contact rod because even though it was designed as a hard bait rod, it's so sensitive. So again, it's checking off that sensitivity box for me. It's a comfortable rod and it's a powerful rod. So I can even get away throwing a 110 on it, no problem. It's actually kind of built for this. But because it's a spinning, I can go down into some of this downsizing stuff like an Ashura or an Xanaham, no problem, and throw it on this. The one thing that I would mention to you, if you go spinning, you're gonna need to kind of play and decide for yourself if you like going straight floral or you like going braid to leader. Now, on casting, I am 100% straight floral. Again, you can play yourself. You may decide that you like braid to leader, but I would almost guarantee you're gonna get more bites on straight floral. There's just less resistance. Every time you're jerking and pulling, that line can slice through the water without creating any sound. If you're throwing braid and you go to slice, all those grooves on that braid are through that water, you're not gonna get as many bites. So I try to go straight fluoro as often as I can, even on spinning. So what that means on spinning is you usually just have to either upsize to the next size up, or just make sure you're getting a deep enough spool to where you don't have to fill the spool completely to the edge, and that will help with your manageability. Okay, so uh, on something like this, this is a 3,000 size reel. You could even go to a 4,000 size reel if you wanted to. That'll just widen the spool. I always go with a deeper spool for this because again, it lets me stop about an eighth an inch before the end of the spool. If this was braid, I would have spooled my spool all the way to the end, okay? But with fluoro, it's good to keep it back inside that spool a little bit. It'll just help with line twist help with manageability and you'll find that that'll be a, a big difference maker for you okay so windbuster is a great place to start now if you're never throwing that half ounce stuff and you pretty much are living on quarter three sixteenths even lighter stuff <clears throat> in the p5 line they make this amazing sleeper rod called the whippet so this is an f266 okay it is designed almost identical to the Windbuster. It has almost the same exact taper as the Windbuster, just on a lighter scale. Okay, so it's gonna cap out at a quarter ounce on the high end of the lure rating. So it's really perfect for throwing these smaller baits, but you're not gonna really be able to throw anything much bigger. But for throwing that little 3 16 ounce jerk bait, it's amazing. It's got a really nice soft tip on it. You can chuck that stuff a mile works great. Now, if you don't want to throw 450 at a rod, probably the most famous spinning rod ever built uh, for a jerkbait in the Orochi line for 299 is the Ronin. Okay, so the Ronin again was kind of built for a 110, but it can easily throw the smaller stuff as well. So you can throw the X Nanahan, you can see the taper's about the same, it's got just enough tip, 
It's got that nice kind of bend in the middle uh, and then it fastens up down here. So the only reason I don't choose the Ronin before the Windbuster is just because it's heavier, right? That Windbuster just doesn't weigh anything, so it's just so easy to throw. Uh, but the Ronin's an amazing stick, does everything you need it to do. All right, back to our baseline. Okay, we started here. The next level up would be what I would consider to be heavier line jerk baits. Okay, so these are baits that you're gonna fish potentially on 14 or 16 pound line, but they're baits really that you're gonna kind of jerk harder, you're gonna work more aggressively. You can certainly throw them on lighter line, but I try to visualize everything as like a weight, how hard I'm gonna be using it, and then correlate the line with the rod as well. Okay, so these are gonna be baits that will look something like this. The Mega Bass line, something like an Edo Shiner. Pointer 100, right? Duo makes amazing jerk baits in like the 120 and 130 size, right? In OSP, I talk about these two baits a lot, the Varuna and the Redra. Okay, so the Varuna is only a 110 millimeter, same as the Edo Vision 110, but it's built for heavier line and harder twitches, okay? Rudger is one that I basically live on in the winter time. I love this bait. So these are baits that, you know, we talked about that 110 where at the end of your motion with the rod, that's right when the bait should start to move. With these baits, kind of the opposite. You can try it like that, but these baits really want to be popped, right? These baits want that heavier, more aggressive jerk. So this is a bait that I might be out there and I'm really hammering. And usually by about the midway through my motion, I want that bait starting to move. So if I'm in the 110 and I'm twitching down, right? And I want right at the end that bait to move, right? Boom, right at the end. But with aggressive bait like this, I want that bait kind of moving that whole time through that rod pull. So it's really important that we match the rod. The rod's gotta be a little bit stronger than what we were using before. Otherwise, it's just gonna overwork the rod. You're gonna feel like you're just pulling too much weight, okay? So, this is where in the P5 line, I would jump from the P5 110 stick, which is my starting point with the 110, to the P5 110 special. So, we've gone up half a power here. It's an F4 and a half, 611X. This rod is strong. And I think a lot of people were caught off guard by how strong this rod was in the beginning because, <clears throat> you know, you, you, it doesn't weigh anything. It's so light, it's so light in hand, but it's powerful and it gets really fast, really quick. So it really wants that heavier bait. I would never recommend this rod for throwing anything less than a 110. I don't even really like it for a 110. I like it for that next size up. So for me, like maybe a plus two, Edo Shiner, Pointer 100, you know, and then of course the OSP stuff that we talked about, the duo jerk baits, money for all that, right? That 120, 130 size, incredible. Okay, so it's basically just a beefed up version of the 110 stick, but you just have so much more power back here that on those harder rips, it's not just turning into a noodle, okay? If you didn't want to jump into the 499 price point, the Orochi Jerkbait Special, very similar rod. Okay, so you're at 299. So I would choose the Orochi more for this. I would choose the Levante more for the lighter line, softer jerks. Okay, this has got a little bit more power to it. It's a little crisper, uh, a little more sensitive. It can handle that heavier bait. And then some other options. This is where like the 610 Poison Adrena, the 610 X-Pride Medium, this is where those rods, you know, an 843 MBR in a Loomis, this is where those rods will fall in. Basically 110 to 130 is kind of gonna be their strong suit. So, you know, if you're Adrena fans, X-Pride fans, anything like that, that's where this rod is gonna really suit you. All right, and then finally, the last category is kind of like that big Magnum jerkbait. Now this isn't normally a category that we historically have spoken much about, but it's a category that's become very popular this year with the increase in live scope popularity. A lot of guys have gotten on some of these bigger jerk baits and really implemented them into the arsenal. So, you know, we're finding conversations about things like the Kanata, the Kanata Plus One, the Bali Song Minnow. You could even throw maybe the Realis 130 into this category. 
we're having a lot of conversations about these jerk baits that weigh an ounce, ounce and a half, ounce and three quarters. You can't just throw this on a regular jerk bait rod, okay? But what do you throw it on? That's kind of the question. Like I tried to throw it on the 110 special and I felt like I was gonna break it every time I ripped it. Well, yeah, cause it's an ounce and a half bait, right? So if this is a category that you guys are doing a lot, here are some rods that I recommend. Now, historically that Kanata has been used on this rod. This is in the Orochi line. This is the Diablo Spec R. Now, even though the lure rating is only to three quarters, the way this rod bends, where it's kind of a, it's kind of parabolic, but it's a strong, powerful parabolic, right? So it's got a lot of power to it. It's an F5, so it's a full half power heavier than the 110 Special. And it's 7.2, it can manage that extra weight in that pulling all day on that big bait. Sets you in the 299 price point, so you're kind of in that mid-range rod, <clears throat> and it, it handles it great. Okay, so this would be an excellent option for you. A rod that I've always used to throw my Kanadas on is this guy. Now, this is a Valkyrie 66 Medium Plus. Same as that one. Lure rating caps at three quarters of an ounce, but this is a heavy rod. Like there's a lot of rod here, even though it's only 66. It weighs a lot and it's super powerful because it's a glass carbon composite. So you're gonna get a little more wobble with this rod than the Orochi but it's a really strong rod and it's short. So if I'm making shorter, more accurate casts, running down bank, underneath docks, that kind of stuff, I really like that Valkyrie 6.6 medium plus. But the rod that's definitely been kind of the hot topic rod for a bait like this this year has been this one. This is the Destroyer P5 Mark 56. This rod was designed as a swim bait rod. Jeff, I know you love this rod for mm -hmm. like shad glides, ice slides, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Griff's been using it for all kinds of things. Guys are using it as crawler rods, bottom contact. But for this bigger hard bait, this can be an excellent rod, especially in open water. So it's a longer rod. So you kind of need that casting room. But if you're live scoping or you're making super long casts, this can be a great one because it does have enough of a soft tip and bend and sensitivity and power. All right, guys. So that is a wrap. I hope that was insightful. If you guys have any questions or anything that we just covered, like I said, drop it down below. I will get answers for you. And I love going down rod rabbit holes. So if you guys are trying to dissect or fine tune your arsenal at any time, hit me up on Instagram. I pretty much live there. I can go through DMs with you and we can go talk about these as much as possible. But uh, Jeff will leave links to everything we talked about if you guys want to check them out any closer. And of course, if we missed a rod that's working great for you guys, drop it down below as well. Uh, I want everybody collectively to share so we can all learn from each other. So get out there, enjoy jerkbait season this fall. I hope you guys have an amazing season and we will see you again soon. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your business. Peace out my jerkbait friends. Later.